Okay, we're going to start, and uh, our client, Mr. Amiri, will come in, hopefully while, uh, while we're in progress. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for all being here today. My name is Lily Sotelo, and I'm a directing attorney here at Columbia Legal Services. We are here to announce a significant class action lawsuit against Northwest Hospital regarding fair access to hospital care. Today, Columbia Legal Services and Schrader, Goldmark, and Bender filed a class action lawsuit against Northwest Hospital on behalf of Mr. Kamal Amire and Mr. Hugo Cabrera Villalobos, challenging the hospital's unfair, deceptive, and unlawful practice of subjecting patients to collection efforts for their hospital bills without first screening them to determine their financial eligibility for Washington's charity care law. Washington's charity care law requires all Washington hospitals to grant free or discounted care to financially eligible patients. Low-income people like Mr. Amire, who is uninsured, and Mr. Villalobos, who is underinsured, our plaintiffs sought necessary emergency care, but instead of screening them for charity care, Northwest Hospital sent their accounts to collection, putting an impossible strain on their already stretched income. When families and workers across Washington receive the necessary health care services they need, we all benefit from healthier communities today and dollars saved on essential medical services tomorrow. The cost of medical services, especially during emergencies, should not prohibit people from seeking medical care. Today's lawsuit ensures that people who are eligible for assistance receive it, and the, the ability to pay is not a deterrent to seeking necessary hospital care. I am joined by attorneys Matt Guyman and Adam Berger, Mr. Kamal Amiri, who will be here shortly, one of the plaintiffs in the case, and by all the ally organizations who work with communities impacted by unaffordable hospital debt, including the Northwest Justice Project, Northwest Health Law Advocates, Casa Latina, NAACP, El Centro de la Raza, Solid Ground, and Washington Can. I would like to thank them for being here and for representing the most vulnerable people of our community. I'm going to uh, repeat my comments briefly in Spanish. Buenos días, señores y señoras. Gracias a todos por estar aquí. Mi nombre es Lily Sotelo y soy abogada con Columbia Legal Services. Estamos aquí para anunciar una demanda colectiva contra el Northwest Hospital en Seattle relativo al acceso justo en los servicios hospitalarios. Hoy, Columbia Legal Services, junto con Schrader, Goldmark y Bender, presentó una demanda colectiva en nombre del señor Kamal Amire y el señor Hugo Cabrera Villalobos. Alega la demanda que el Northwest Hospital no evalúa a los pacientes para servicios de cuidado caritativo como requiere la ley. En lugar de ayudar a los pacientes, el hospital les envía una factura. Cuando la gente no puede pagar, el hospital envía la factura a colección. La ley del cuidado curitativo, caritativo eh, requiere que todos los hospitales de Washington proveen servicios gratuitos o de descuento para personas de bajos recursos. Personas como el, el señor Amire, que no tiene seguro de salud, o como el señor Villalobos, que no tiene seguro suficiente. La demanda de hoy asegura que las personas que son elegibles reciban asistencia financiera y que la capacidad de pago no sea un impedimento para buscar atención necesaria. Estoy aquí con los abogados Matt Guyman y Adam Berger, con el señor Amire y también con las organizaciones que trabajan con las comunidades más afectadas por la deuda hospitalaria. Tenemos a Northwest Justice Project, Northwest Health Law Advocates, Casa Latina, NAACP, El Centro de la Raza, Solid Ground y Washington Can. Me gustaría darles las gracias por estar aquí y por representar a las personas que más necesitan ayuda. Ahora le presento a uh, Matt Guyman, que va a decir unas pocas palabras de la demanda. I'll now turn it over to Matt Guyman, who will say a few words about the lawsuit. Thank 
Thanks, Lily. Um, I'm Matt Guyman with Columbia Legal Services, and I'm here with my colleague Adam Berger from Schrader, Goldmark, and Bender, who's co-counsel on this case. Um, I'd like to say just a few words about this class action lawsuit and why it's important. The charity care law is an excellent law. The problem is that it's not living up to its potential. The problem is that too many patients who should be getting charity care aren't getting it. The purpose of the law is to guarantee free care to all Washington patients who have income at or below 200% of the poverty level. That translates to $23,760 for an individual person or $48,600 for a family of four. 30% of the state population is below that poverty level. The reason that Mr. Villalobos and Mr. Amire and thousands of other patients of Northwest Hospital like them didn't get charity care is that Northwest didn't do a proactive screening to determine their financial eligibility before demanding payment. This case covers both uninsured patients like Mr. Amire, who had no insurance at all, and also patients like Mr. Villalobos, who had health insurance, but it didn't cover the full cost of their care. In both cases, Northwest should have affirmatively screened them to identify that they were eligible for charity care. Instead, it sent them to collections. This case is intended to stop Northwest's practice of demanding payment from patients without screening them to identify which patients are eligible for charity care. We are also asking the court to declare that a patient's right to get charity care continues after their hospital bill goes to collections. In this case, Mr. Amire um, asked for charity care after a collection lawsuit was brought against him and Northwest Hospital told him it was too late for him to get charity care. We're asking the court to rule that that's not the law, that you can continue get, to get charity care after a case, a collection case is begun. I'd like to uh, tell you a little bit more about Mr. Amire's facts. I think uh, we were hoping he would be here, but uh, my co-counsel, Mr. Adam Berger, can tell you a bit about how he interacted with Northwest Hospital and what his experience was. So I'll, I'll uh, let Adam talk to you for a moment about that. Good morning. My name is Adam Berger. I'm a cooperating attorney on this case with Columbia Legal Services and proud to, to be filling that role. Uh, Mr. Amire hopefully will be here in a few minutes, but in the meantime, I would like to tell you uh, what happened to Mr. Amire because it is very typical of what happens to uh, hundreds and thousands of patients, Northwest Hospital and at other hospitals across the region. Uh, Mr. Amire is a 55-year-old uh, taxi driver and at the time that he went to Northwest Hospital, he was uninsured and his household income was less than 200% of the federal poverty level, which uh, would and should have qualified him for charity care. He went to the Northwest Emergency Department on November 16th, 2013 because he was suffering from vertigo. He was given fluids, uh, he was diagnosed with an ear infection, he was given antibiotics and sent home. Uh, and that took about two hours. Uh, Northwest Hospital sent a bill to the wrong address, so he'd never received the bill. Uh, the next thing that happened, and uh, Mr. Amire has just arrived, but let me just uh, finish the story, and then Mr. Amire can tell it again in his own words. Uh, he was, uh, the next thing he knew, he was being, or rather his household, was being served with papers by Northwest's collection agencies seeking uh, more than $3,500 in medical bills, more than $400 in interest. Mr. Mira was out of the country at the time the papers were served on his son. Uh, when he came back into the country, he went to Northwest Hospital to the billing department to ask about charity care. And as Mr. Guyman has told you, uh, was told that it was too late for him to seek charity care because uh, the collection agency had already filed a lawsuit. Uh, that lawsuit ended in a default judgment against Mr. Amire, and the collection agency proceeded to garnish his bank account and uh, take wages that he really needed to provide for, you know, the basic necessities of life for his family. 
with that, I would like to turn it over to Mr. Amiri. Hello, everyone. My name is Kamal Amira. I actually went to Northwest Hospital in emergency that I have felt infection in my ears, prevent me like uh, walking. Uh, so my my son took me to the hospital uh, like in the early morning and that they just diagnosed that I have infection in my inner ears that vertigo it's called vertigo something like that and I hospitalized just like one hour and a half something they gave me medication IV and I went home and I give them my address, everything, that to follow up with my bills and everything. But we haven't get any bills home. And I left for a while, and they send, like, papers for my son that I have to pay the whole amount of the money. And they didn't ask me even in the hospital that if I need any financial aid for to to cover all these high expenses for me. So they keep uh, uh, they, they, they turned my papers to the collection agency, and I tried many times to go to Northwest Hospital to seek uh, compromise or help or any kind of solution that we can work together but they refused they just turned me back and said no we can do nothing for you all your bills are now at the collection agency uh, so finally i tried to 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 seek hope uh, to seek help for from the columbia uh, to to help me to get this money i I, they garnish from my money that I have supposed to spend on my family. Thank you very much. Gracias, señora Mire, por compartir su historia con nosotros. Me gustaría presentar a Uma Sarif, abogada con Northwest Health Law Advocates, que hablará sobre su experiencia trabajando con los pacientes de bajos ingresos en los hospitales de, del área de Seattle. Thank you, Mr. Amiri, for sharing your story with us. I would like to introduce Huma Sarif, an attorney with the Northwest Health Law Advocates, who will talk about her experience working with low-income patients as a social worker in Seattle area hospitals. Good morning. Um, NOLA stands in support of the plaintiff's effort to enforce the law against hospitals that are not complying with their obligation. Our state charity care law is still a critical part of our health care system. Medical debt is a persistent problem in our state and nation even after the advent of health reform. A recent Kaiser Foundation and New York Times survey found that one in five working age Americans with health insurance reported problems paying medical bills in the past year. That often causes serious financial challenges. The situation is even worse among people who are uninsured. Half of them face problems with medical bills. In Washington, low-income people are twice as likely to be uninsured as others. These are people who won't be able to get out from under medical debt. And even those with coverage have issues. Large numbers of enrollees in our health benefit exchange reported in a survey that they had difficulty affording the plans that were being offered. I worked with low-income patients as a social worker in Seattle area hospitals for over eight years. I have seen many a patient suffering from overwhelming medical debt and others who delayed obtaining care for fear of cost. For many, the cost sharing and co-pays can be too much, even with health insurance. This results in exacerbated health conditions and poorer health outcomes. One patient, for example, was sent to collections despite being on a fixed income leaving him overwhelmed and making difficult choices to pay utilities and food bills or the outstanding medical bills. Charity care is vital in allowing individuals access to care that they may not otherwise have access to. 
We need to ensure that hospitals meet their obligations so that individuals can access necessary care in a timely fashion without fear of an overwhelming medical bill. No patient who's eligible for charity care should be subjected to unnecessary fear or improper demand for payment. Thank you. Gracias a nuestros presentadores. Además de esta demanda, Columbia Legal Services está participando en una campaña para fortalecer los derechos de cuidado caritativo en el estado. Nuestro esfuerzo incluirá la reforma de póliza para aumentar el acceso a cuidado caritativo, la educación para informar a la gente a través de Washington sobre sus derechos. Y por favor, recojan uno de los... Uh, de, de los folletos que tenemos en inglés y en español y un análisis en profundidad de la pro, del problema. Por favor, vea el paquete de prensa para más información. Nuestros presentadores y las organizaciones asociadas están disponibles para entrevistas. Thank you to all our speakers. In addition to the lawsuit, Columbia Legal Services is engaging in a campaign to strengthen charity care rights across the state. Our multi-advocacy approach will include policy reform to increase access to charity care, education to inform people across Washington about their rights, and please pick up a brochure that's available in Spanish and in English, and in -depth, uh, an in-depth analysis of the problem. Please see the press packet for more information. Our speakers and partner organizations are available for one-on-one -on -one interviews, but I'd like to open it up to questions if anyone has any. <coughs> have a concrete number as to how many patients we're talking about at Northwest Hospital. I see two listed in the lawsuit. Is it more than two? It sounds like it is based on the speakers. Matt, do you want to answer that? And the fact that it's a class action. Yeah, so um, actually, if, I think we have some, some hard numbers in our complaint. If somebody could pass me a copy of the complaint. Oh. Uh, So we, um, we, we've looked at Northwest Hospital's uh, um, own statistics on its hospital service area. And according to Northwest Hospital, there are 639,000 uh, patients in its hospital service area, or potential patients. 21% um, of those patients live in households that are at or below 200 percent of poverty level. So 21 percent of 639,000 is approximately 134,000 people who, uh, if they need emergency care from Northwest Hospital, um, should qualify for some type of financial assistance under the charity care law. Do you know how many were denied or either uninsured or Sure. Right. Uh, we know it's many thousands. We don't know the exact number. Um, it's uh, uh, a question of actually finding out in the lawsuit from Northwest Hospital's records uh, how many patients they had each year um, during the, the period of the lawsuit, which is a six-year period. And are there complaints filed anywhere by patients that you've accessed that might give you a clue as to how many patients you might be talking about? I mean, what, what would be the legal recourse for somebody like Mr. Amir, if had he not come to an attorney, is there some means other than going to the hospital to complain that um, he could find out what his rights are or uh, file a com formal complaint, if you will? How does that work? Well, Mr. Amir uh, could seek relief on an individual basis. Uh, the reason we're bringing this case as a class action is that um, there are thousands of people, and by having Mr. Amir represent uninsured patients and Mr. Villalobos represent underinsured patients, we can have them as representatives of the thousands of other people who are in the same situation. Again, we don't know the exact number until we get records from the hospital, but it's a very large number. And don't the hospitals in their annual report list the, the indigent care? Is there a difference between indigent care and the underinsured and uninsured? Is but they all, all the same thing. Well, the, the hospital uh, does have records uh, for Northwest Hospital. It says that of its total revenues uh, for the most recent year reported, which I think was 2014, 1.8% of its revenues uh, was uh, identified as charity care. Um, 
even that number we think is a low number when you compare it to the uh, the percentage of people who uh, are either uh, at 200 percent of the poverty level or below 200 percent of the poverty level, which, as I said, is is over 20 percent of their uh, hospital service area. So, is that what's the difference between indigent care and care? Is that the same thing? Well, I think the way the hospital uses uh, the statistics, uh, indigent care or charity care is. Uh, care that's provided for which they don't get any compensation. So they would be uh, essentially synonyms. What's your understanding of how the collection process works? Do they, does Northwest Hospital, do they sell their debt to a collection agency, which is why they were able to tell uh, your client, it's out of our hands? Our understanding in the case of Northwest is that they use collection agents. Uh, they don't sell the hospital debt. They assign the debt to their collection agency and then have the collection agency uh, sue the patients uh, to recover uh, the amounts that uh, they billed the patient for. Uh, there are other hospitals that sell hospital debt, um, but not in this case. Are there other hospitals that you think might be uh, not screening patients for charity care? I mean, is, is Northwest yeah. Hospital the only hospital? Not at all. This is, uh, from our investigation, this is a widespread practice. This is a hospital that, uh, where we've talked to a number of patients and um, we have basically gathered a lot of information specific to this practice at Northwest Hospital, but we've also talked to patients at a number of other hospitals uh, that are doing essentially the same thing, which is sending people to collections without doing a proactive, affirmative screening to figure out which people qualify for charity care. So can you describe the, the process or, or the mechanism by which there's the, the, the people at the, the, accounting, uh, the accounting office of the hospital is supposed to do that type of, 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 of proactive screening. Right. I mean, how, what, what's the best practice for that, and what is more is more missing, missing on that? Well, again, we haven't actually, um, in, the, in the lawsuit, there's questions we'll ask, there's uh, documents we'll ask for, and there's uh, questions we'll ask of Northwest Hospital uh, uh, officials. But, but generally, what the statute says, what the charity care law says is that at or near the time of hospital service, the hospital needs to do an affirmative determination of whether patients qualify for charity care. Um, we think that means uh, proactively asking for the information you need to have to figure out if people qualify for charity care. That would be what's your income, how many people are in your household, and then comparing that information to the uh, the poverty level uh, grid, which essentially will tell you whether with that information they're below 200 percent of the poverty level. And if they are, they should be getting some discount under the charity care law. And then so in the cases of both of your clients, that, that entire process was overlooked. There was no mention whatsoever. And you mentioned, your client mentioned that he was with his son who took him to the hospital. Right. The son had no recollection of a conversation that took place between right. some bunch of the They were never asked, uh, what's your income, what's your family size. Um, they were asked questions about whether they had insurance. Did they have private insurance? Did they have some other type of third-party payment source uh, for the health coverage? But what they weren't asked was the questions we think are essential, which is, uh, what's your income, what's your family size, the information that the hospital needed to figure out if they qualified for charity care. So can you be more specific about um, the policy change that, that you guys are talking about? So if hospitals are required to ask and they're not, is this just a matter of getting them to ask or is it forcing them to ask or changing the policy? I mean, is this we're going to require legislation? Well, the, we actually. Right. So there's other things about the charity care law that we think can be improved. But in this case, the charity care law already says that the hospital has to do an initial determination uh, of patients to see if they qualify uh, for financial assistance. So this case is not about changing the law as written. It's about making hospitals comply with the law as written. What hospitals in the county or the city or the state even are doing as well, you know? You know, I can't, 
I can't speak to what hospitals are doing the screening well. Um, there are statistics that talk about other hospitals that provide a much larger percentage of their um, their gross revenues that they call uh, charity care. Um, Harborview is an example. Uh, a high percentage of its total revenues is identified as charity care at the end of each year. Uh, but they also have a different patient mix. Is it your position that this is an intentional policy or that it's just something that is overlooked? We don't know. I mean, right now it, the point is that people who are not getting charity care um, should be getting it. Um, I mean, there's there's financial reasons why the hospital wants to maximize the amount of money it recovers, including from patients who have difficulty paying their bills, um, and including for patients who are below 200 percent of poverty level. But we don't have any information that shows that it's an intentional policy to make poor people pay money they shouldn't have to pay. If this is widespread practice, do you expect other lawsuits to be filed with other parties too? I can't speak to that. I mean, we're focusing right now on this case, so I can't say. And how do you know that there are thousands of people um, like your two clients? Well, I, I think one way is, is just basically by extrapolation. Um, we've looked at the collection lawsuits filed by Northwest Hospitals Collection Agency, um, and they file thousands of collection lawsuits for Northwest Hospital bills every year. Um, and over the last six years, which is the time period covered by this case, it's even that many more thousands of collection lawsuits. And um, so just by looking at the collection lawsuits, we know something. Um, I think there's also patients who uh, are being billed but haven't been sued in collection lawsuits, so that would not be the complete number. That would just be a way of estimating. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And we are going to be available for individual questions if you have them. Thank you.